Good morning. Welcome to WRMK Morning News right here on WRMK News Radio. My name is Malibu and let's begin with your morning news right now. First up, we're going to begin with a look at some local news. First up, Consumer Report, Best Affordable Smoke in CO Alarms. Let's take a listen to that report from WMUR News 9. Simon Glensack and his family were lucky to make it out of their home after a dryer caught fire. Smoke is like white smoke billowing out of the dry area. It just went so fast. It's just still mind boggling, boggling my mind. Today, many house fires burn faster, hotter, and are deadlier than ever. 40 years ago, you would have had 17 minutes to get out of a house on fire. Today, just three. That's because many newer homes have open floor plans with fewer walls and doors, allowing the fire to travel faster and more freely. Another factor? A lot of homes today have furnishings made with synthetic materials like plastic and particle board, which burn much quicker than, say, solid wood. So getting an early fire warning and then getting out is more important than ever. This advice from the National Fire Protection Association makes it easy. Install an alarm on each floor, test at least once a month, and replace after 10 years. Now, Consumer Reports' exclusive smoke detectors ratings are free, so no membership is required. This dual-sensor smoke detector from Simplisafe received top scores from detecting both flaming and smoldering fires. It's battery-operated, which means you won't need a professional to hardwire it. It can also be interconnected, so if one alarm sounds off, the others will follow. This battery-powered smoke detector from KID also received top scores for detecting both flaming and smoldering fires. This Ciderwell smoke detector from Walmart is another good option and comes with a 10-year battery. Now, we have made accessing CR's free smoke and carbon monoxide alarm ratings easy. There's a link where you can find the story on our website. Okay, and there you go on that report. Dairy Speedway sells one Point four seventy five million lottery ticket. Let's take a listen to that report from WMUR News 9. And someone will be all set with their holiday shopping after a jackpot winning lottery ticket worth $1.4 million was sold in Derry. The Tri-State Megabucks ticket was sold Saturday at the Speedway on Birch Street. This is the second jackpot winning ticket sold there in New Hampshire this year, sold in the state of New Hampshire. One sold in Milton, that was back in March, and that one was worth nearly 14 million bucks. Okay, and there you go on that report. American Red Cross opens Amherst Donation Center. Let's take a listen to that report from WMUR News 9. Today, the Red Cross marked the opening of a new donation center. The donors are able to give blood and platelets. The nonprofit says the state of the art facility will increase platelet collection capacity by 60%. The site is positioned between two other donation centers in Manchester and also in Danvers, Massachusetts. Donating blood is one of the most important things that we can do for each other, for our trauma response centers, for those who live in our communities and are impacted routinely for the need for blood donors, and I'm honored to say welcome. It is a way you can save lives. The location will be open Wednesday through Saturday. You can make donation appointments at redcrossblood.org. Okay, and there you go on that report. Two people hurt. After head-on crash on I-95 in Greenland, that shut down all southbound lanes. Let's take a listen to that report from WMUR News 9. Marissa, Steve, the Greenland fire chief tells me the two people hurt in this crash are going to be okay. But I spoke with a driver who saw it happen, and he tells me the aftermath wasn't easy to look at. There's a guy in a car on fire. There are not many times in your life where you go, I'm just going to let that work itself out. Nicholas Wyman says he was in the right place at the right time this afternoon when he stopped to help a man who had just gotten into a car crash on I-95 in Greenland right in front of him. When I got to the vehicle and I moved the airbag, he was like slumping over going to sleep. I could hear him. And so I kept slapping him and yelling, yelling at him. The Greenland fire chief. 
chief says two cars were involved in that it happened just past exit three when one car crossed the median from the northbound lanes and hit another that was traveling south. Both drivers left with non-life-threatening injuries. The uh, red SUV took uh, just peered straight off into the middle and head on into the white sedan. Traffic was shut down because it was debris across the whole road. Crews working for about an hour to clear it and reopen all lanes. It's a little longer than we normally are out there because uh, we had the other accident uh, a week ago. Um, that was a very serious accident. That crash happening the same way and on the same stretch of 95 exactly one week ago. A 24-year-old driver and 58-year-old driver died after the 24-year-old's car crossed into the southbound lanes from the northbound side and hit the other driver. Well, these two accidents probably shouldn't even happen. And New Hampshire State Police are not releasing the identities of the two drivers from tonight's crash, but they do say at this point neither are facing charges, and the Greenland Fire Chief says in the meantime he just wants to remind people to slow down on the roads and to never drive distracted. We're live in Greenland tonight, Imani Fleming, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that report. Public weighs in on proposed sale of Catholic Medical Center. Let's take a listen to that report from WME War News 9. We need good jobs over here. You could pay a fraction job, good union job. We want to keep our jobs in this China. Terry will sign the pledge to protect tax breaks and loopholes. The corporations will send jobs overseas. It's crazy. If Terry goes to Washington, our jobs go to the other China. Yeah, Marissa, this is the most detailed look we've gotten into that deal for CMC to be bought out by that for-profit out-of-state health care provider. And supporters of that deal we spoke with tonight say they feel this is the best last option that they'll have on the table to keep CMC open and operational. Change is difficult, um, but uh, this is the way forward. A deal on the table with the future of a major health care provider in New Hampshire potentially hanging in the balance. The state now reviewing a proposal for Catholic Medical Center in Manchester to be bought out by Tennessee-based HCA. I have been behind it from the beginning, and I continue to be behind it. Supporters say the $110 million deal would offer relief from the long-standing financial challenges plaguing CMC. The hospital has lost money four of the last five years. Recent court filings with the state showing it's currently hemorrhaging 2 to $3 million every month. Without this transaction, I really fear for what we will be able to provide to the city and to our patients, especially on the west side of the deal raising red flags about what a future under HCA could look like. The company already runs three New Hampshire hospitals, including Frisbee Memorial, where only a few years after taking over, HCA shut down the labor and delivery unit. In the year before I was given my resignation, I continued to hear all the promises of a rejuvenated hospital and a functional ICU, but I repeatedly saw the complete opposite. With that fourth HCA hospital, now you have a monopoly in this area. You are not giving a freedom of choice of who you want to go see. The proposal also comes with a promise of millions of dollars of investment into CMC over the next decade. It would also spin off several charitable services, like the Health Care for the Homeless program, into a nonprofit overseen by the Catholic Diocese. Supporters say, most importantly, the deal would keep the hospital's doors open. You're not going to get everything you want, and you need to know that. But what's more important, I think, is to have health care and have that network, that capacity of, of services. Tonight's public comment session was part of the ongoing review from the Attorney General's office into this proposed deal. That review also includes going through dozens of pages of financial documents from both CMC and HCA to try to get as clear of a picture as possible as to exactly how this deal could impact patients both here in Manchester and all across New Hampshire who get health care here at Catholic Medical Center. Live in Manchester, Ross Ketchy, WMUR, News 9. Okay, and uh, there you go on that report. That's a look at some local news. Now let's go into national news. Deadly McDonald E. coli outbreak is expected to grow, CDC says. Let's take a listen to that report from ABC News. 
and a deadly E. coli outbreak linked to McDonald's tonight. The CDC now warning that the number of cases could rise. One person is dead, at least 49 sick in, in at least 10 states now. Colorado reporting the most cases. Tonight, investigators focusing on one ingredient, slivered onions. And for now, the quarter pounders are off the menu in one-fifth of all McDonald's restaurants, all in the affected region. Here's Mulalenghi. Tonight, as health officials race to find the source of the deadly E. coli outbreak linked to McDonald's quarter pounders, they say they expect the number of people affected to grow. So far, they've tracked 49 cases of E. coli across 10 states. At least one person has died, and 10 others had to be hospitalized. The FDA says slivered onions served on quarter pounders are a likely source of contamination. McDonald's pulling the entire sandwich off the menu in the affected states, about one-fifth of all restaurants. CEO Joe Erlinger trying to reassure customers. We're confident that we'll see our way through this and we'll restore um, confidence uh, for the American consumer to come to McDonald's. The outbreak could be a setback for the world's largest hamburger chain that's been trying to win back customers with $5 value meals after they balked at years of rising prices. It's all about the timing of getting answers, getting a sign off by the CDC, and making people feel comfortable that this has been addressed. McDonald's stock down about 5% today. Well, David, the one death occurring in Mesa County, Colorado, according to public health officials here. And McDonald's says at this point in the investigation, they believe the contamination stems from a single supplier, David. Mola Lenghi with us here tonight. Mola, thank you. Okay, and there you go on that report. We are going to switch gears now, and let's go into your weather. And let's take a look at your weather right now. Today, partly cloudy, cooler, high 66, winds northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Tonight, some clouds this evening will give way to mainly clear skies overnight. Low 38 degrees, winds northwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And tomorrow, mainly sunny, high 61, winds light and verbal. It's currently partly cloudy and 56 degrees right now. That's a look at your weather. Now let's take a look at some traffic. And looking at those roadways right now on 90. Three heading into Massachusetts. You got a fairly nice smooth sailing ride with some medium based traffic. 293, a nice smooth sailing ride with some medium based traffic and around the Manchester area. Medium based traffic as well. 93 around Hooks at Bow and Concord. Um, smooth sailing ride with some medium based traffic. 393, a nice smooth sailing ride with a little bit of medium based traffic. Route 4, fairly nice smooth sailing ride. Little spots of medium based traffic. Route 16 of the Spazling, nice smooth sailing ride as well. 95, nice smooth sailing ride as well. 101, a fairly nice smooth sailing ride with some areas of medium based traffic. And Merrimack Dash went to that border, Massachusetts. Nice smooth sailing ride with a little bit of medium based traffic as well. That's a look at traffic. Now let's switch gears and go into sports. In sports, Boston Celtics, they have a game tonight at 7 o'clock p.m. against Washington Wizards. Let's go Celtics. Hopefully they can win tonight's game. Also, Boston Burns, they play tonight at 7 o'clock p.m. against Dallas Stars. Boston Burns are back on home ice at the TD Garden. Let's go Burns. Hopefully they can win tonight's game. And Thursday Night Football. Minnesota Vikings versus Los Angeles Rams tonight at 8.15 p.m. And tomorrow at 8.08 p.m., New York Yankees versus Los Angeles Dodgers World Series Game 1 begins tomorrow night. And that's a look at your sports. That does it for this edition of WRMK Morning News right here on WRMK News Radio. This is Malibu hanging out with all of you. Thank you for tuning in and have a great morning. Goodbye.